Is anyone shocked? Is anyone surprised that I have an overly ambitious November TBR? Because I don't think anyone is. <laughs> So before I get into more of the video, I just want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, which is Likewise. Likewise is a new app that helps you easily discover and share recommendations. If you know me, I'm always looking for new recommendations for the books and TV shows and movies that I love to watch, and Likewise has all of them. Have you ever finished a book and you want something just like that experience, but you don't know where to go next? Likewise will definitely help you with that problem. It is powered by a combination of smart technology and recommendations from real people to give you the best recommendations possible. All you have to do is tell the app genres and books that you like and they will begin to curate personalized recommendations for you. Some of the features of their apps are that you can build lists of your favorite books. So I built a list of all of the fantasy romance books that I like to read and they've been giving me some more recommendations on that as well as just for general books that I like. They recommended me some really fun books like The X-Hex which I actually just finished reading and others. So every day you get um, to swipe on different book recommendations and you can say whether or not you are interested in reading it if you've already read it or if you just want to swipe past it. So it's kind of like Tinder for books. There are also groups that you can join for conversations on like specific genres or things that you are looking for. I've also posted an ask which I just posted it like a few minutes ago so obviously no one's responded yet but I am looking for recommendations for more fantasy romance books so feel free to hop on there and respond to my ask if you are gonna join the app. So with that all being said I do have a custom link that you can use to download the app. It is linked down below in the description. The app is 100% free, you can follow me on the app, we can be friends and downloading the app helps support my channel so have fun with it. Once again, thank you to Likewise for sponsoring this video, and now let's get into the rest of the TBR. November kind of is like winding down towards the end of the year, and I really kind of just want to catch up on some goals that I had set earlier in the year and have not achieved. So with that being said, let's go into what I'm going to be reading. I'm going to break up this TBR. First, I'm going to do the audiobooks I want to read, then the Kindle books that I want to read, and then the physical books that I want to read. So this isn't necessarily the order that I'm going to read them in, but I like breaking it up this way so I can see the different categories. So starting off with audiobooks, the first audiobook that I want to tackle this month is You by Carolyn Kepnes. And the reason that I want to read this book is because I want to watch a TV show. So one of the things that I've been wanting to do more of in 2021 is watch TV, which that seems like counterintuitive because usually people want to watch less TV, but I've gotten so into reading that I don't watch TV and there's actually like a lot of good shows out there that I want to watch and You is one of them. I've always been intrigued by it but I was like, oh, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And then this past October, I discovered the joy of listening to like mystery thriller horror audiobooks in the car on my way to work, especially now that the traffic is worse. And let me tell you, I feel like it's a huge game changer. And I feel like listening to you on audio is going to be so super creepy. So I'm gonna to listen to the audiobook and then watch the show. So I'm very excited about that. And I think that I will be creating like a specific vlog for reading the book and then watching the TV show. So keep your eyes out for that. So you is told from the second person, which makes it very interesting. I think it'll be very creepy to read that way on audio. Having like someone say, you did this, then you did that. Very spooky. Joe Goldberg works in a bookstore in East Village and a beautiful aspiring writer walks into the store. So he Googles the name on her credit card and finds out that she is Guinevere Beck and she has a public Facebook account and tweets incessantly. She is simply back to her friends. She went to Brown University. She lives on Bank Street and she'll be at a bar in Brooklyn tonight. Perfect for a chance meeting. So Joe invisibly and obsessively takes control of Beck's life to ensure that Beck finds herself in his waiting arms. So Joe transforms himself from stalker into perfect boyfriend all while removing the obstacles that stand in their way even if it means murder. That's so freaking creepy and I've heard nothing but good things about the TV show so I'm really like curious to read it and then watch it and see what I think and I think it's just gonna be very spooky and scary even though you know spooky season is kind of behind us. I still really want to read this and give this one a go and there are three books in the series and three seasons. I don't know how much I'll get through just this month 
but I'm just putting the first one on my TBR. The next audiobook that I have is Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. If you don't know, Victoria Schwab, V.E. Schwab, one of my all-time favorite authors, and this is her middle grade series following Cassie Blake, who can see ghosts after a near-death experience. And so this is the last in the trilogy, and I've listened to the other books in the trilogy on audio, and I've just adored them, and so I'm definitely going to be reading this one soon, and I can't wait. And so this one takes place in New Orleans, which as we all know is a very spooky city. The first one took place in Edinburgh and the second one took place in Paris. So we follow Cassie and her best friend Jacob, who was also a ghost that saved her from drowning when she had her near-death experience. Her parents are ghost hunters and they go and explore these paranormal locations and Cassie actually has the ability to see through the veil to the other side because of this near-death experience that she had. So yeah, this is just such an awesome like middle grade series and I will read anything Victoria Schwab writes. So here we are. I also need to show you guys my prized possession, which is that I actually have an arc of City of Ghosts. I don't hold on to like every arc that I get, but um, this one is signed. So... I'll never be giving it away. And I actually got this one at BookCon in 2018, so it's just very special for me. It's the first time I met Victoria Schwab. Um, I have most of my books by her signed because I went to her signing for Vengeful and there was no limit on the amount of books that you could bring. So I literally went to work that day, carried every single V.E. Schwab book in my backpack and then went on the train to the signing. And my back was so uncomfortable. I was standing in line for so long with like 10 books in my backpack, but it was completely worth it. I just love her. Okay, now moving on to the Kindle books. The first book that I will be reading this month that I have already started is Zodiac Academy, The Awakening by Carolyn Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. So in this book, we follow Tori and... Darcy who are twins born under Gemini and they are living in the real world. Their parents had died and so they were just moved from foster care to foster care and so they're really not well off. Um, however, one day a mysterious guy shows up and he's basically like, you guys are fae, you have to come with me to the Zodiac Academy and there they find out that they have the power of all four elements and that they are actually the heirs to the throne of Solaria. And basically in the fae world it is brutal dog-eat-dog -dog world. You either have to show your power or you're going to die, essentially. And so they kind of enter this world of like bullies and power struggles and it's really intense, definitely dark because it is like a bully story and we just follow these girls as they are discovering their powers. And someone has described it to me as like adult Harry Potter and I totally kind of like feel like that. Like if you want that like boarding school with magic but this time it's elemental magic and they're fey and like it's just super crazy and intense but I'm enjoying reading it so far I'm about like halfway through uh, and I will continue to enjoy it in November. The next book that I want to read is A Curse in Ash by Julie Xantopoulos um, and what's really exciting is that Julie is actually a booktuber here and she's published her first book which is very exciting and I definitely want to support her and read this and it is a fantasy romance so you know, my favorite genre. Very excited for this one. So everyone knows that you don't mess with the Fae on a new moon. But the Fae that Aisling Quinn deals with, Donia Thin Vale to cross over and jeopardize her carefully curated life. As a powerful witch, she's battled for agencies in realms that will control her. Now she's a circle of friends she loves, a stable job, where she excels, and a craft she's perfecting. Enter a handsome stranger and magically linked to her, and the Fae fiance who won't leave her side until threats against her life stop. So as if that will ever happen. Aisling has trained in magic use, self-defense, and secrecy, but no amount of training prepared her for a curse that hits so close to home. So I'm very excited for this one. It seems like a very cool, like, urban fantasy romance setting with fae and witches and just like everything that I am looking for in a book, honestly. So can't wait to read this one. Then next I have some rom-coms that I wanna read. I feel like this summer I read many romances, rom-coms, and then I wasn't really reading them that much. And I want to get back to them because I love rom-coms. I love like romance and like it just gives me the butterflies. So the first one that I want to tackle is A Certain Appeal by Vanessa King. This one is out on November 2nd and I have an e-arc so I'm going to be reading it that way. And this is a sparkling contemporary retelling 
Pride and Prejudice set in the tantalizing world of New York City burlesque. So after a betrayal derailed her interior design career, Liz Bennett found herself in New York City. Now she's an executive assistant by day and a stage kitten by night. She's discovered a second home with the fellow performers at her burlesque club. Love is the last thing on her mind when she locks eyes with Will Darcy across the club. The spark between them is undeniable until she overhears him call her tolerable. <laughs> Bennett is determined to write Darcy off, but once their best friends fall head over heels, they're thrown together. Each encounter begins to feel more heated than the last, but can their chemistry overcome a terrible first impression? So, um, yes, I read Pride and Prejudice in high school. I honestly should probably give it a reread because it's been so long since I read it, or maybe just rewatch the two movie. Okay, the next rom-com that I want to read is Heartbreak for Hire by Sonia Hartle, and this is an office romance. Which I just love an office romance. So what is this about? Okay, Brinkley Saunders has a secret. She dropped out of grad school and now works at this company where it's a service that specializes in revenge for jilted lovers called Heartbreak for Hire. It may not be Brinkley's academic dream, but it's helping her save up some extra cash for her dream of opening an art exhibit and lets her exercise a few demons all while empowering women. But when her boss announces that he's hiring male heartbreakers for the first time, Brinkley's no longer sure she's doing the right thing, especially when her new coworker turns out to be a target that she was paid to take down. Though Mark spends his days struggling up the academic ladder, he seems to be the opposite of a backstabbing adjunct, a nerd at heart in a criminally sexy sweater vest who's attentive both in and out of the bedroom. I mean, it checks all the boxes for me. What more can I say? Then the last rom-com that I have on here for the month is The Spanish Love Deception, which I've just been seeing everywhere. So I'm like, all right, well, now I need to know what everyone is talking about. And it's actually on Kindle Unlimited, if you didn't know. This is by Elena Armas. And so we have a wedding and a trip to Spain and the most infuriating man in three days of pretending. Catalina Martin is finally not single and her family is happy when she announces that she's bringing a boyfriend to her sister's wedding. So now she needs to find someone that is willing to cross the Atlantic from New York City to Spain to be her stand-in boyfriend. And, but that doesn't mean that she's desperate enough to bring the 6'4 blue-eyed pain in her ass standing beside her and Aaron Blackford, her coworker. His main occupation is making Catalina's blood boil. So is it worth the extra suffering to bring her insufferable co-worker along with her? And so it's an enemies to lovers, a fake dating romantic comedy, perfect for those looking for a sl steamy, slow burn romance. I mean, what more can I say? Now on to my physical books. The first book I have to read is All of Us Villains by Amanda Foody and Christine Lynn Herbin. And Tortine was kind enough to send me the arc. And I'm very excited because there is a signing for this coming up in person in Boston. And I'm going to be going to it. I can't wait. And I'll get to meet both these authors and get my book signed. So excited. And the tagline is the back. You fell in love with the victors of the Hunger Games. Now prepare to meet the villains of the Blood Veil. So cool, and this cover is just very villainous. The blood moon rises, the blood veil falls, the tournament begins. Okay. So every generation, as the blood moon rises, the seven families of Ilvernath choose a champion to compete in a tournament to the death. The prize is exclusive control over a wellspring of magic, which is the most powerful resource in the world. This year, thanks to a tell-all book, the families are thrust into the spotlight, granting each of them new information, new means to win, and in, most importantly, a choice. Accept their fate or rewrite the story. But this is a story that must be penned in blood. This is really cool. I also, like, I'm very intrigued by the plot element of these families doing this tournament thing and then all of a sudden like they're exposed to the entire world through this book and then having to deal with the consequences. The next book up for November is going to be Vesper Team by Margaret Rogerson because Margaret Rogerson is my absolute favorite. I have adored all of her books so far there's only been two but like some of my all-time favorite books ever so I know I'm just gonna love this and this is gonna be her first duology which is very exciting because up to now she's only written standalones. So we are following a nun. A nun. Very exciting. So the dead of Laura Lee do not rest. Artisma is training to be a gray sister, a nun who cleanses the bodies of the deceased so that their souls can pass on, otherwise they stay trapped. And they rise as spirits, ravenous for the flesh of the living. So she would rather deal with the dead than the living who deal in whispers about her troubled past and her scarred hands. Her convent is attacked and 
possessed by soldiers. Artisma defends it by awakening an ancient spirit attached to a saint's relic. It is a revenant, a malevolent being that threatens to possess her the moment she drops her guard. And wielding its extraordinary power almost consumes her. But death has come to Laura Lee and only a Vespertine, a priestess trained to wield a high relic, has any chance of stopping it. With all knowledge of the Vespertine's loss of time, Artisma turns to the last remaining expert for help, the Revenant itself. And as she unravels a sinister mystery of saints, secrets, and dark magic, her bond with the Revenant grows, and when a hidden evil begins to surface, she discovers that facing this enemy might require her to betray everything she's been taught to believe, if the Revenant doesn't betray her first. Okay, I love it. Okay, like, I just feel like giddy happy thinking about reading this book, because I'm so excited for it. And if you don't know, this book actually has no romance which like i've seen some people surprised at but i'm like actually really interested to see how it will be portrayed so as you know i'm a big fan of the from blood and ash series and we now have a prequel series to that jennifer l armstrong loves to write interconnecting series and i'm a sucker for it so here we have a shadow in the ember and it's a prequel series dealing with the god nikitos and his consort seraphina I don't really want to go into too much detail about it because like it's so connected to the From Blood and Ash series. Um, but we have we go back in time to when like the primal gods ruled the earth and the details in this are going to play into the War of Two Queens. So I'm just a sucker for the From Blood and Ash series and I'll be having a dedicated reading blog to this as part of my reading JLA series. Then the last physical books I want to get to this month are the Harbinger series by Jennifer L. Armentrout because one of the things I started earlier this year was my reading JLA series and then I kind of stopped doing it and I really want to get back to it because I do want to read through all of her stuff. So this one is a follow-up to the White Hot Kiss series. Um, oh no, the Dark Element series, which is this series, and it's about like demons and gargoyles. And this follows one of the characters from that series. I don't even want to say who because it's like a spoiler. Um, and a new character named trinity who is going blind but she can see ghosts and spirits so now we have these wardens who are the gargoyles and we also have demons and now we have ghosts and spirits like kind of woven into here so i think it's gonna be really exciting so i'm gonna try and read storm and fury rage and ruin and grace and glory all for a vlog so please keep an eye out for that and please check out my other reading jla vlogs i have so much fun with this i love like diving into an author's backlist and reading all of their works. And I think it's gonna be really fun reading all of these books back to back. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching my TBR. If you have watched this far, leave a little tiger emoji. I'm just feeling like a t in a tiger mood today. I don't know. Um, and I love seeing like when everyone writes a little emoji to show that they've watched this far. It just is, warms my spirit. And thank you again to Likewise for sponsoring this video. Please make sure to check out my link and download the app. Please add me on there. We can be friends. And I just think it's a really fun app and you guys should totally check it out. And with that, happy, happy reading month in November. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.